Uh, we do have a few fan questions to uh, uh, get us rolling. Uh, so uh, one question is uh, to someone who played the demo said, uh, are, are there more tunes available for the Groovatron? It's a cool weapon to have, but I get sick of hearing that same disco music in the demo over and over again. There are more tunes. Uh, I think there might be, I think there's 14 or 15 of them. And so um, you'll definitely hear different tunes as you play. Um, and we're making we've made the Groovetron a bit more rare. I think we've I think we cut down your from five to three that you can hold at once. So to make them feel a bit more special. Um, so you'll definitely hear some more tunes. And you know that that song has been ingrained in my head. And James has some cake in his mouth, so I get to talk longer. Uh-huh. Sorry about that. I thought he was going to go a little bit longer. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm swallow. Um, Tanad on NeoGaf asks, will there be a hard mode or a new game plus type of mode in Ratchet and Clank Future like there was in Up Your Arsenal? Um, yes. I mean, there is going to be a, um, there's a challenge mode. And on past Ratchets, it has been difficult, but not nearly as hard as a lot of our fans would have liked. So we have decided to take the gloves off for the challenge mode on RCF and give people a real challenge to sink their teeth into. That will be very happy for some of the people on the Insomniac forums who are always asking, why won't we make the game harder? So that's cool. Um, last but not least, uh, some people are asking a lot. The big question on everyone's mind is, what's the frame rate? And where's the optimizations at? So what, how, how are things looking since we're nearly final? And that's a question we should be able to answer at this point. Sure. Um, well, we've got, a, we've got a variable frame rate, which makes sense for what we're doing. And we've always um, had that. Um, and for the most part, we hit 60. But if you've thrown out a tornado launcher, uh, Mr. Zircon, uh, plasma beasts, um, while a million things are exploding, it may drop below 60. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, it, it's, it's always above 30. That's, that's not an issue. And it's, it's in the high 50s and oftentimes in the 60s. But, you know, we really have to make tough choices when we try to hit 60 frames per second. And we didn't want to cut out a lot of really cool features and a lot of stuff that, that a lot of people just won't notice um, as they play. But it's a very smooth experience. Um, I've played through it several times. I don't notice... Um, frame drops, um, and you know it's just a lot of fun. When you're blowing a lot of stuff up at once, um, you you just don't really care about frame rate. You're just watching a lot of cool effects. I will say, after taking one of the most recent discs, and I've played the E3 demo a lot, and I've been playing it a lot at PAX, and I got back and got one of the most recent discs. I was like, whoa, this is just a lot smoother. A lot of the V-sync or tearing issues you see completely gone there. So it's like, you know, just. It's much smoother. It runs at 60 a lot of, uh, most of the time, and uh, you will not see many hitches. So that answers a question people have been asking us since we showed the game for the very first time to EGM. Uh, wow, months and months ago. February. February. Yeah. You want to talk about uh, disk space? We can talk about disk space since uh, that's another question on everyone's mind. Uh, Ryan, you, you've got you're, you've got this. Sure. We talked about this at Media Day, and uh, you may have seen it on Joystick. Uh, and if not, we will be just over 22 gigs. Um, obviously, that includes the localization of 15 languages and uh, a little bit of necessary uh, system uh, software and padding. But the key point, really, is that even if you took all of that out, uh, the game content itself would still exceed the uh, disk space on a DVD-9. So uh, for those of you wondering, could you have only made this game on PS3, uh, this particular game, the answer is yes. Yes, we could only have fit it on a Blu-ray disc. And on top of that, we need the cell processor and all sorts of other things to uh, make the game look as awesome right. and run our engine the way yes. it does. Otherwise, it would run at one frame per second on the PS2. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would take quite a bit. Um, and one other thing, a uh, quick touch on, a lot of people have been asking, are you supporting 1080i? Because there's a lot of legacy HD sets. We do. We yes. support 1080i. 1080i. Um, and for those of you who are curious, uh, Mike Acton sent over an explanation that said, if you have 720p on your TV set, that's what we will use. If you do not have 720p, we'll go to 1080i. And if you don't have 720p or 1080i, you'll get some 480 love. So 
that's what we've got there, and I believe there's no difference in the frame rate on 1080i. It's no, it should all be the same. Yeah. Exactly. So um, there's some questions about that too, which I thought was a little weird, but I figured I would answer them just to make those people happy. So 60 frames a second, 720p, we support 1080i. It's 22 gigs on the Blu-ray. All these questions that the journalists have been asking for forever. There you go. It's all out there. Write a news story about us. Link to our podcast. Thank you. I think that's, uh, I think that's just about everything for uh, this uh, Ratchet update. Sounds good. We've got five weeks left. You guys will be playing it very soon. Uh, to those of you who can't get the uh, the demo on disc, there is a demo coming to the PlayStation Store. Um, tentatively October 4th. Tentatively October so 4th. So Eurogamer said that I said that, and I can tell you I never said that. Yes. So, so somebody else from Sony must have said it, but it wasn't me. Yes. So uh, October 4th, supposedly, we'll see. Yes, should be. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's all we've got for now. Do you got anything else? Right. I'm good. All right, cool. Brian? I think I'm good. All right.